Mr. please be seated. Honorable Dr. Ernest Hillier, Minister for Tourism, Investments, Creative Industry, Culture and Information. Honorable Gibian Ferdinand, Parliamentary Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Investments, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Mr. Calvin Lee, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism. His Excellency, Peter Chen, and Ambassador, Republic of China, Taiwan. Ms. Elsie Tai, Food Secretary, Embassy Republic of China, Taiwan. Mrs. Ramona Henry Wynn, Executive Director, Cultural Development Foundation. Ms. Junior Frederick, Director of Events and Production at the Cultural Development Foundation. Mr. Imran Emmanuel, Mr. Bernard Furness, Mrs. Barbara Jacob Smalls, Ms. Rahisa Joseph, Executive Director, Folk Research Center, Ms. Uh, Lauren Sidoni, Chief Executive Officer, Events Company of St. Lucia, Ms. Lisa Evans, Chief Executive Assistant, Secretary to the National Export Council for Export St. Lucia. Participants, staff of the Cultural Development Foundation, ladies and gentlemen, viewers. Welcome to the official launching of the Train the Trainers Lantern Design and Construction Virtual Workshop under the theme, Learn to Impact bringing forth light through intercultural exchange in the traditions of lantern making. This workshop is a four-week program supported through the, the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan in St. Lucia under the Spotlight on Taiwan Fund, the Lantern Association of Taipei in collaboration with the Cultural Development Foundation and the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture, and Information. To tell us a bit more about the program, some remarks from Mrs. Ramona Henry Wynne, Executive Director of the Cultural Development Foundation. Mrs. Wynne. Good morning, everyone. Proto protocol already established. Um, permit me to adopt. This program, Learn to Impact, through intercultural exchanges. Um, we started this journey with the embassy a few years ago, where um, we assisted them in their national day activities by preparing a concept for a lantern competition. That went down very well. Ambassador was very pleased. Year two, we did the same, and we went on further to help them with the celebrations of their national day because COVID was rampant. Um, Ambassador, they almost called it off, but CDF jumped in, and through our director of events and production, we were able to come up with a virtual concept. And of course, that went very well. It was viewed in St. Lucia, the diaspora, as well as in the Republic of China, Taiwan. This year, last year, we applied through the Spotlight on Taiwan Fund to do a craft enhancement project down in Swazel. That project was very successful. So we again applied late last year to do this training workshop, Train the Trainers we felt it would have been more beneficial to train trainers rather than to train everybody. We felt that the impact would have been better because you train persons who can go on to train others. I think the reach, it is far reaching rather than just training individuals. And um, the project, the 
session started last week, Tuesday. And um, we are very pleased to say that we are able to deliver in the south as well as in the north. And uh, the feedback from the participant, participants, sorry, it is very phenomenal. Um, I think persons made lanterns, we use a lot of cardboard. But we felt that the Republic of China, Taiwan, they're the masters of lantern making. So why not share what they knew? And why not CDF applying to share in that knowledge? Knowledge is power. Knowledge shared is power multiplied. And that is a quote that Robert Noyce uses, a co-founder of Intel. Why not? And uh, you know that the knowledge that is gained throughout the four weeks will not just stay with the participants, but we do the annual Lantern Festival, and we will utilize the skills of those individuals to go out into the communities and to impact others, impact persons in the communities, in the schools. They have done it in the past, but this year we are equipping them with new skills, best practices, and the know-how. We're not saying that our people can't make lanterns. We're not saying that they're not good at it. But we're saying if there is knowledge out there that can help us to enhance our craft and to develop um, our people and to broaden their knowledge, why not? And uh, I would like to say to Ambassador, you know, we really do appreciate the effort. We really do appreciate the partnership that CDF has been able to develop with the embassy as well as your Ministry of Culture in the Republic of China, Taiwan. And um, I say to the participants, don't see this as just preparing for the lantern competition that we do in December. See it as an, employment, an avenue for employment. Um, in, just sitting there on day one, my imagination started running wild, just looking at you know, the skills that were being imparted. And I'm like, there is so much we can do with what we're learning. And uh, one of the participants said to me, you know what, Mrs. Wynn? I make piñatas for birthday parties, and I see where I can use that skill already. You know, so here you are, somebody already seen an employment avenue. So this is what CDF is about, developing people, developing their craft so that they can go out there and become impactful. They can go out there and have employable skills or the, the skills that will as, assist them in not just depending on the government for handouts, but holding their own and being able to earn a living through the skills that CDF is assisting them with. So, I would like to say again, especially to those in the South, there is still a few spaces left for those persons in the South, so we call on you to join in. It's not too late. Our cash class is filled already, but we still have a few spaces left in the South. So anywhere from the South, from me could going forward, feel free to join in. And we welcome you with open arms. I'd like to say we're never too old to learn, we're not too good to learn. So here's an opportunity that has been given to us, and we embrace it with love. I thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wynne. We now move on to a video presentation best of, sorry, of the best of the best Lenten competition highlights. See, firstly, I want you to understand that the only reason I made it thus far was because I was declared a champion. So you see, because of this, daily I'm motivated by my pride. You could say I'm a lion as I prey on all my weaknesses in this wild life. Because I understood that up here, yeah, I'm in control. See, I'm the king of my own jungle. But don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I have it all together. No. I mean, many great men fall even seven times over, but only a greater man can get back up and start over.
Thank you. Beautiful indeed. Some remarks from His Excellency Peter Chen, Ambassador of Republic of China, Taiwan, St. Lucia. Mr. St. Lucia. Honorable Dr. Anis Hile, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industry, Culture and Information, Parliamentary Secretary Gilman Ferdinand, and Ms. Uh, Ramona Henry Wayne, Executive Director of Cultural Development Foundation, all the participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. morning. It is really my pleasure to join Honorable Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Hile and Honorable Parliament Secretary uh, Ferdinand to attend the launching ceremony of Spotlight Taiwan Project, Learn to Impact, bringing forth light through intercultural exchange in the traditions of lantern making today. Since 2020, Taiwan Embassy has uh, partnered with Cultural Development Foundation for two years to hold the lantern competition, just as uh, uh, Ms. Ramona Henry Wen uh, mentioned. And we also implement the Spotlight Taiwan project since last year. And we have seen so many creative and amazing lantern hours. I think all of us will see from the video clip. There's a lot of beautiful artworks, and which were displayed to showcase the cultural relationship between Taiwan and St. Lucia on our National Day celebration. And we even sent one lantern to attend 2022 Taipei Lantern Festival uh, in January. I think you may know both Taiwan and St. Lucia have traditional and historical lantern festival. In the spirit of intercultural exchange and further expand our creative collaboration on lantern making this year, we invite Taiwanese lantern experts to bring in hands-on experience and expertise of the lantern making process to St. Lucia. And thanks to Cultural Development Foundation, we began our four weeks workshop last week. Participants coming from all around the island spend their leisure time to come to Castries and Viewfall Center to take virtual lecture from Taiwanese facilitators every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evening. Their spirit of learning and preserving cultural heritage is encouraging. Could we give them a big round of applause? And during this four weeks workshop, Taiwanese facilitator will demonstrate how to create effective lightning and illumination to develop the use of non-traditional and eco-friendly materials and to guide participants on how to interpret the themes and process of lantern design. At the end of the workshop, all the participants will produce their own lanterns which involve expertise craftsmanship, creativity, and diversity from both countries, and showcase in the lantern competition, as well as uh, our national day. I can wait to see all those uh, beautiful, complete hours. Our ultimate goal is that we hope all the participants can pass on knowledge and traditions to more solutions, and revitalize the lantern making traditions island-wide. And just from the inspiring speech from Ms. Wayne, I think this is not only a cultural exchange, this is also an opportunity to uh, increase uh, revenue, increase income of the solution. Lastly, this is the second year that we implemented Spotlight Taiwan project in San Lucia. I would like to take this occasion to express my sincere appreciation to all the working staff and colleagues in Cultural Development Foundation that realize this cultural exchange. Also, it will not be so successful without the stewardship laid by Honorable Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Hilaire. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, for your continued support and all the effort you put to enhance the cultural exchange between our two countries. Art <laughs> Artistic creativity is an area both Taiwan and St. Lucia have potential to work with and collaborate on. I wish this Spotlight Taiwan project 
every success, and all the participants an inspiring and fruitful exchange. Thank you. Thank you. We move on to video presentation of highlights of lanterns in Taiwan. some visual audio visual of instructor Yang Chilang, chairman of the Chinese Artistic Lantern Association. Gwesalusia 花灯在台湾不仅是个传统的记忆光不只能照亮黑暗
透过本次的文化交流，让各位收获满满。同时，也希望各位在结业时都能完成一件令人满意的作品。谢谢大家。Presentation we have three, so now we <laughs> we move on to a testimonial from Mr. Gillan Avril, one of our luncheon workshop participants. Mr. Avril. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Speaker meeting to the Gopta Protocol already established. Um, I'm new to Lantern. This is really my third year taking part in Lantern or Lantern building. My background is carnival, the carnival industry. And in 2020, when we had called it the Park in the Lantern competition, I was like, should I, should I not? Because this was really outside of my norm. But I said, you know what? I welcome the challenge. Let me broaden my scope. Let me see what I could actually pass on my knowledge, just see what I could pick up from the Lantern competition. Because I've always watched it from the outside, um, especially during the December, the usual festival seasons. But you know, I was always wondered, how did they do it? How did they not do it? You know, what was the mindset behind it? What was the thinking behind it? So when I heard that there was a theme behind it where the Taiwanese were actually coming on board to say, you know what, we're going to have this theme to actually showcase our local talent on an international scale, I said, you know what, let me jump to this challenge. And lo and behold, my first year actually won the competition. Um, and then the following year, there was a different theme. And with that, I actually built a team. So I said, you know what, let's see if now we're going to showcase our local talent internationally, where the winning lantern would be now showcased in Taiwan. I needed to go all out. So I actually brought other persons involved in the team. Again, it's not just the lantern makers, but I found persons with diverse backgrounds. There was an um, engineer, someone who had um, card designing, someone who was a painter, actually brought persons on board. I said, you know what, this is... This is not something just for St. Lucia, but this is international. Let us see what we have to offer here. And again, the team that I put together, we won. <laughs> so the Lantern was showcased in Taiwan, and that was, again, what the thought process behind it was merging the two cultures. And I think the week before that, the minister was actually promoting the culture of St. Lucia, where they had this robot showcasing the linkage between Taiwan and St. Lucia. So I actually jumped on board that and said, you know what, let us bring that into the Lantern. And that's what we felt that we should bring into this whole thing. This year, I actually loved the idea that we actually had a trainer. My hope was that the trainer had been on island to actually learn. Virtually, it's one thing we can learn so much, but actually having a hands-on would have been a much better approach. But nonetheless, I think some of the persons inside of the room, we have a diverse background and skill set. So we're able to pick up on some of that. And even within the classroom setting, we're able to share some of that knowledge. Like I said, I have 19 years background in the carnival making industry. So even some of the materials that they were using, I was able to actually pass on some of that knowledge because there was one example with the wire, the gauge of the wire. We had no idea the thickness of it. But then with my background and um, Mr. Marshall's background in carnival, we were able to actually look at what was shown on television on the screen and actually break it down and actually source it locally. And that was one of the issues, sourcing materials locally. You know, what they have in Taiwan and what we have locally is different. So we now have to improvise in that regard. So it was, it's been challenging for the first week because we now have to change our mindset from what we know for the past 20 years and now learn a different skill set, a different way of doing things. Some of the things are similar, but it's again changing your mindset to that. And it's really, it's a really enjoyable session so far. I mean, they worked with us in some of the designs that we have. Again, the way we traditionally make things out of cardboard, we now have to put that on the back burner. Now we have to learn a new skill set, welding, and use different wires and framing and what have you. And like Ms. Wayne said, from day one, when they showed the first examples, my mind went. There were about four of us in the classroom, our minds went. We picked up our phones and we started researching, you know, looking at the equipment. What do we have here vis-a-vis -vis what they're using over there? You know, what can we do outside of the Lantern competition? What can be done? So we started thinking of... Um, June Equiol, different skill sets. We're looking at um, Christmas, we're looking at New Year's. We saw so many different avenues for this because usually, again, for the hotels, when they would request things, it out of cardboard or out of wood, what have you. So we say now, no, 
Let us move away from that. Let us now create stuff using the same mindset, same um, ideology from the Taiwanese, same skill set, and actually apply this locally. So I think maybe not this year, but in the years to come, maybe hopefully next year, you could now see a new diverse set of products coming from the locals. Like Ms. Wayne said, the young lady who was doing piñatas, right away she tapped me and said, hey, I could use this for my thing. And then she went and spoke to Ms. Wayne about that because it's a whole new thinking of it. The materials are different. You know, you learn new skills, airbrushing, welding, fabrication. It's just a completely different mindset. So we're really hoping at the end of this workshop that the skills that we learned, we can pass it on to a new generation of persons or persons who are unable to attend and really take the Central Atlantic competition to a whole new height. So this is my hope out of this. And I really, from again, speaking to the other participants, that is the mindset that this is not just for the next four weeks. And it's not just for December, but beyond that, there are whole set of skill sets, whole new industries that we can develop from this. So this is my take from this, and I'm really thankful, Mrs. Wayne, for this opportunity and the CDF team. Um, hope phase two might be participants can actually go to Taiwan. <laughs> I'm hoping for that. Um, because I'm seeing that there's a whole factory, there's a whole industry out of this, and just doing it virtually is not good enough for us. We see that we want more. So um, we're really hoping that, um, Mr. Ambassador, that next phase, that we actually get a, a crop of us to actually travel to Taiwan and actually get hands-on training with Mr. Lang. Because it's one thing, like I said, to do it virtually. It will be different to actually see it and actually have him over you, shadow you, to actually create it. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the ceremony. Thank you, Mr. Avril. Now that you've heard his testimony, we should go into the video production of the ongoing Lantern program. Thank you very much. We have pending the special presentation from the Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan to the Cultural Development Foundation. It's a, it's a trophy from Taipei city government uh, to show their appreciation to Cultural Development Foundation and also for the uh, government of San Lucia for sending a lantern to attend the 2022 uh, Lantern Festival in Taipei. I think the artwork from San Lucia really make the Lantern Festival more uh, colorful and meaningful. So, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much. 
We now have remarks from the Honorable Dr. Ernest Hiller, Minister of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Thank you very much, Mistress of Ceremony, my colleague, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Even I forget it sometimes. <laughs> all of them, um, Ambassador Cheng, um, Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Culture, um, other distinguished invitees, um, Director of CDF, Mrs. Sidoni from Events Company of St. Lucia. Participants, good morning. Now, where do I start? Um, I listened to Avril, I saw the video, um, and I'm almost tempted to try my hand at making a, a lantern. I know it might certainly not make the grid, and it will certainly never reach Taiwan. So, thing. But I, I want to, first of all, say to Ambassador to convey the sincere thanks of the government and people of St. Lucia for the continued support and assistance that we do get from the government and people of Taiwan. In so many aspects of our national development, Taiwan has certainly always been there to, to provide assistance. And Taiwan is a very valuable partner to St. Lucia. And this is not just in terms of giving us support for the big, obvious infrastructural projects, but also the very deep, intrinsic, meaningful programs like this one. They, they, they're not grandiose in the sense of financing for the hospital and for other projects. But these projects and those initiatives are so valuable. And when, when you see in Taiwan what a Lantern Festival is like, it really excites you. And sometimes people ask me about why we're spending so much money on Carnival, on Junior Creole, on Emancipation. And, you know, you want to engage in a debate with them on those, th th those issues. But in a very simplistic way, if you unlock the creativity of a people, which is what those initiatives are doing, we become a richer society. We solve our problems better. We achieve more. And, and, and I have to say this morning because this is a whole new dimension we'll be opening up in St. Lucia. When I was asked about why you insist on having carnival, and I said we cannot continue to suffocate the creativity of our people. We need to unlock it. We need to move beyond um, COVID and, and, and for us to assert our personality once more as a nation. And those initiatives, and why I'm thankful to you, for Ambassador, to your government and people for helping us, will help us as a country, as a people, to become richer. A people that can invent, that can create, a people that can excite itself to achieve higher levels of performance and to achieve things that are beyond the ordinary imagination is a rich society. And, and being able to produce lanterns like this that, people, that can just excite people when they see them is something about raising the value of our society. And it is important. And, and we really appreciate the support that you, you're giving. And, I heard Avril again saying, maybe not this year, but next year, we will certainly be a lot grander than we've ever been. And I support him on that. And I know Drina and I have had a conversation about you know, certain little things that I, 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 I want to place emphasis on. And in that conversation, she raised with me about the Lantern competition. And I was saying to her, yeah, you really need to rethink how we do it in St. Lucia. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it grander. Let's involve all the communities. You know, let, let us really make the Lantern um, Festival something which is really grand. And with this training, we expect it to be bigger, not just in terms of conception, but in terms of how many of participation as well. So what do we do? Do we have an inter-district competition? Do we have, um, you know, let's think about it. Let's CDF sit down and think about how best we can make the Lantern, um, you know, festival, something which is embedded in us. And 
the point was made about how we can be used in other areas. In carnival, for example, the making of our king and queen costumes. Um, even individuals wanted to have theme birthday parties. Now the children want all kind of Batman party and um, what Transformers party. You know the young people nowadays, before we used to have a birthday party, it would be a little rock kick and, and squash. But now children want theme parties. They, they want, you know, even in our, in our events, our fets, you know, we need to take it to a level higher rather than just walking into a color me red or euphoria. If you can actually enhance the look and feel and make patrons feel that they in a different kind of experience. But those things can help in terms of the, the look and feel and the setting and creating that. And it opens new employment opportunities. The youth economy comes into play. How do we um, say to young people who have an interest in this, you can actually create a livelihood in St. Lucia, selling your services, making for weddings, for christenings. You know, there's so, 100 birthday parties. There's so many avenues. If you, if you have the quality of the product and you can market it and sell it, um, there are people that will want to spend some money to have, you know, the look, look and feel enhanced and pay a little extra. Um, as a promoter, if you can enhance the experience, people will pay more. You know, people will pay if they believe they're going to get an experience. An experience is not always about free food and drink. It's just about the vibe, the feeling. And those um, designers that are trained now can contribute a lot to this. But more importantly, I think it will unlock greater creativity in our people in terms of our intellectual capacity, our, you know, even our emotional intelligence to be able to think beyond just the ordinary. And, and I'm really happy just looking at some of the, the lanterns. Just imagine you in Taipei and watching this presentation. How would you feel as a person? You have seen those uh, manifestations of creativity among the um, Taiwanese um, people. Let us see how we can translate it to St. Lucia. So you, the trainers, um, I hope you do get the opportunity, and I hope CDF does create the opportunity for you to train more individuals. I hope, you know, CDF can convince the ambassador um, to take some of the best people to Taiwan to actually get the practical hands-on uh, and the experience of a Lantern Festival to, to really be inspired by it, to be able to come back and to train more individuals in St. Lucia. For us at CDF and the ministry to be able to organize the event in St. Lucia at a higher level with greater impact and for us to really be able to say to our people, we're opening new doors for you. And once the youth economy gets started, there will be support in there for young people who want to be able to, um, you know, take that as a, a potential career and the creation of a livelihood for themselves. So, this is exciting stuff, uh, and I certainly look forward, maybe not this year, but as Avril promised, next year, for us to see a marked difference in how we approach the, the, the event and the quality of lanterns that we have. And I think it, it is thanks to the assistance of the government and people of Taiwan through the, lo the local embassy. We all know St. Lucia. The patron saint of St. Lucia is one. With the patron saint is the patron saint of sight, um, associated with light, because if you cannot see, um, light is the beacon of hope. I'm coming out of darkness, and there's an association between the St. Lucia, the patron saint, and the whole notion of light and what a lantern um, you know, portrays a, a, and the beacon of hope that it is um, to, to our people. So, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, CDF. To all the trainers, I certainly look forward to the product of your work and to see um, that the skills that you've acquired really manifested in different dimensions and different endeavors in our society. So all the best, and I'm looking forward, as I said, in the coming months to see how you're putting those skills into action. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Dr. Ernest Sile. Ladies and gentlemen, let us once again acknowledge our participants for their dedication and creativity. A round of applause for them, please. Thank you very much. For the vote of thanks, I call on Mrs. Dana Dolor Jappé. A blessed morning to all. 
protocol been established, I would like on behalf of the Cultural Development Foundation to express appreciation to all who made the virtual launch and the Train the Trainers Lantern program possible. Our parent ministry, the Ministry of Tourism, Investments, Creative Industries, Culture and Information for their continued support in our programs. Ministry of Culture in Taiwan for the financial support through the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan under the spotlight of Taiwan Fun. Your support in this venture has been a great help in providing the much needed training to our participants. To the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, we say thank you for considering the proposal and assisting us throughout the process. To Elsie Tai, Third Secretary to the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, thank you for your assistance before and during the program. To the Lantern Association of Taipei and teacher Lan Yongchi and his team, we say thank you for your time and expertise towards bringing forth the knowledge and skills in the lantern design and construction. We would also like to acknowledge the management and the management and CDF staff of their hard work in making this program and launch possible. To, and to the participants for taking part in the program, we say thank you. Thank you to our guests and viewers for being a part of this virtual launch. Have a wonderful day and have a wonderful and blessed day. Thank you.